the wing T is is uh, like it is the perfect offense for our town. Okay, so when I went to high school here, man, we ran the eye, and it was about trying to move people off the ball. Well, if you don't have big guys, a lot of big guys, it's hard to move people. But the wing T takes advantage of angles, okay, and uses quickness. Okay, so uh, I used to always take guys that wanted to be fullbacks. Stuff like that, I'd say, hey, you're going to be a third string fullback or you could be my starting guard. And then once they got in there, they loved it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through each, uh, I'm going to go through buck sweep, trap, waggle, and counter crisscross, which are the main four of the wing tee, okay? And you guys run this right now at uh, Pop Warner, okay? You run a lot of this stuff. And uh, it originally, uh, originally came here with Dan, and he had his little spin. When I took over, I ran the basic stuff and just added my little spin. And then right now, Chris Metters, he runs a lot of the same stuff with his little spin. I'm going to show you the way I called it and then the way I ran it. Some of it's going to be similar. So first of all, we had what was called, we were taught the uh, 100, for, whoops, 100 formation. Okay, 100 formation just means we've got tight end to the right, wing to the right, Wide receiver to the left, quarterback, fullbacks always on the midline right here, tailback. Okay, this was called the 100 formation. All right, and you guys, if you run Pop Warner, you guys know this, okay? Yeah. So I just called it, we all just called it one, okay? One formation. Uh, the reason is, is I, I had a numbering system for my passing, so I didn't want to have too many numbers. So the kids knew one formation, so we would just say one, Buck, sweep, right, okay, and that was it. Now, the key was this, every time we, in our play calling, you saw, heard the word sweep, it meant both guards are pulling. So it didn't matter if it was lion sweep, this sweep, that sweep, if you hear the word sweep, both guards are pulled, okay? So, play side guard pulls, and he's gonna kick. So let's just go, you guys, down at Pop Warner, I. You guys mainly see stuff like this kind of look here, all right, from the games I've watched. So we'll just keep it like this, okay? So what we have is we have what's called gap down backer, right? And what that means for the linemen and the tight ends and the wing backs is you have your first block is the gap, nobody's in the gap, and it's down over the guy that's next to you, nobody in the gap, nobody down, you got the linebacker. Okay, so gap down backer. So all these guys have down here, right here. Okay, he's gonna come here and he's gonna pull and kick. Okay, so he's pulling to the right. He hits with his right. Okay, that's what we teach him. So he's gonna throw his elbow. So that lineman's gonna come down here and he's gonna throw his elbow, boom. And that's gonna open up his hips. Okay, no wasted motion, boom, one, two. Okay, and he's coming right down the line, and this backer's gonna step up, and he wants to hit him with his right shoulder. The reason is, is because if he hits him with his right shoulder and this guy spins off, he's gonna spin upfield. That's fine, we're running behind him. If he hits him with his left shoulder, and he spins this direction, he spins right into the hole. And we don't want him in that hole, okay? So that's why we pull to the right, you hit with the right, okay? Center always steps play side, when guard pulls, okay? It's more important to stop any leakage on the side that we're running to than the side we're not running to, okay? Backside guard's pulling, and he's doing what we call grabbing grass, all right? And grabbing grass is just a simple way to make sure that you stay low. So when he comes around this corner here, he's gonna grab grass. In other words, he's staying down. He's keeping his hands down, his body down. That doesn't mean he does this, okay? That means he's low with his legs. That's where you have to have strength in your legs. That's where all the weightlifting comes in, okay? You stay low, so when you come around, boom, you can explode into this block. This guy right here loved, loved, Ryan would know this, loves when he comes around this corner and there's a linebacker that's just doing this. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, here comes Ryan Mahoney and then boom, he hits this guy because this guy doesn't even know he's coming, all right? Now, here, tackle, hard inside step, 
Then we take off the second level, hopefully trying to cut off the linebacker. If the linebacker beats him, he's going to keep going. Okay. Now here's the key. Okay. The backfield. Fullback is protecting backside. Okay. Backside able. Now <coughs> we go through a progression of steps. Fullback is selling the fake like he's getting the ball. He's going to sell the fake. The quarterback does not sell the fake. Okay? Quarterback has to protect the football. So you got a football here. So the quarterback is going to take the snap and he's taking it right into his belt line. And the ball is stays tight inside. Okay? So his first movement is here. Boom. The ball's into his belt line. He's opening up. Second step, he's going to turn. As he turns, the fullback's going to rub shoulders with him. And this takes practice, and we practice this over and over and over again. My guys would run this every day. They would run it about four or five times, okay, every single day, whether or not we were working on buck sweep that week or not. They would work on this, okay. And they had it down, and I could just go, I could stand there and go, okay, hut, one. And they would take one step. Everybody would take one step, and you guys are going to act this out in a minute here, okay. Then we go two, three, and then we let them carry out the rest of the play. But anyways, so fullback's going to do this. They're going to sell it. They're opening up their arms as they're coming through, as if they're getting that ball. Arms up, okay? And then they're going to clamp down, and then they're going to fill this gap. So if you notice, in this play, every single gap is accounted for. Okay, except for out here. When I've always told my tailbacks this, if this defensive lineman can catch you, you're no longer a tailback. All right? So I'm not worried about this defensive lineman running and catching my tailback, or I'm going to get a new tailback. Okay? So every single gap is accounted for. And our hole is right here set up. Okay? So now the quarterback opens up. Okay, and he comes straight back. Tailback is coming straight across. This is where we make the handoff. The quarterback then rolls high, okay, and, and carries out the waggle, okay. Tailback now is going to run, and then he's going to chop and then cut it up. The number one problem I see right now when I watch you guys running this is that this guy does this okay and what happens is is he doesn't have the understanding that this guy right here is his lead blocker this guy is leading him through the hole okay and so the timing has to be that this guy is going to cut it up when you cut it up so then that you're following him and basically for you guys back there you guys would know these guys probably wouldn't it's basically taking the old eye, running the eye formation, instead of lead blocking with the fullback, we're now lead blocking with the guard. It's the same concept. It's just that we're going to use a guard going through the hole. Okay? So it's that same mindset that that tailback is following the lead blocker. All right? And so you have to set that up. Remember, this is a lineman. This is a tailback. This guy is in a two-point stance. This guy's in a three-point stance. If this guy takes off like this, he's going to be a lot faster than this guy that's pulling. So this sets that up, okay? So that tailback's going to get the handoff, and he's going to come, and he's going to boom, and he's going to make his cut, and then go through the hole, all right? And that's how we set up the buck sweep. Now the quarterback is going to roll high, and the quarterback is selling as if he's got the ball. So the quarterback is going to go... Give the ball to the tailback, and then he's going to go as if the ball is on his hip. And he's going to roll as if the ball is on his hip, hiding the football. So the defense can't see it. You have to remember, every fake is the same as a block. Okay? This is the hardest thing to get through kids. Okay? If this guy looks like he's got the ball, and this guy then runs over here, that's one less guy we have to block, okay? So if this guy sells it, this guy sells it, this linebacker steps thinking that he's got the ball, this guy goes here. Once this guy gets through the line of scrimmage, he's gone. 
There's nobody else there. And it's not because the line did a great job of blocking. It's because of his sellout fake and the quarterback's sellout fake. All right? So that is the importance that you guys have to sell these fakes. Okay? you got to show as if you got the ball. All right? And what this does then is it leads into when if you are a fullback, tailback, wingback, quarterback, when it's your turn to have the ball, your play is going to hit. Okay? Because they're going to start not having a clue where the ball is. All right? So this is the buck sweep. So what we're going to do is here, i got one, two, three, four, five of you. Okay? Give me four of you guys. Four of you guys here. Right here. You four right here. You're standing right here. Well, actually, go ahead. You're eating, dude. You want to help me out here? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to line you up right here. And we're going to imagine that you're the wing over here, okay? All right. Okay. Come here. You're going to be my quarterback, all right? You're going to just be right here for right now, okay? Hold on to that ball. You're going to be my fullback. Okay. You can come over here. You'll be the tailback. You'll be the fullback. Okay. Now, you're just going to block down on this play. You're not part of what's going on in the backfield. So you got a simple job. You're just going to step down. Okay. What you're going to do is we're going to first thing we're going to do is have you open up. So with your left foot, you're going to open up as, as soon as you get the ball. So here we go. We're going to go like this. And all I want you to do is you're just going to go like this. Open up just like that. Okay. Okay. So when I say set, hut, just one step, open up. Okay. Set, hut. Okay. That's it. All right. Now listen. Here's the deal. Stand over here. Okay. So. You are the fullback, and when he that one step, you're going to take one step forward, okay? And what's going to happen is, is you're going to have your arms up. You're going to come over here. You're not going to extend that ball. You're going to keep the ball in, in your waist. The reason is, is because he's not getting the ball. So if somebody comes through and hits you, and if you got the ball out here, the odds are you're going to fumble it. But if you got the ball in here, the odds are even if you get hit and you drop it, you're coming down on the ball. The ball's in tight, okay? You're going to come in like this, and you're going to step, and then at step two, I want you to bring your right foot back. This way, this way, this right way. There you go. He's going to go right through, okay, facing. You're going to turn here. He's coming across, arm up, coming across, and you're going to give him the ball. Okay, give him the ball, going through. All right, and then you're going to roll. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to carry out the buck sweep, okay? So all of that right there, this fullback sold the fake. He's rubbing shoulders with the quarterback, okay? We want to make it look like you got the ball. Remember, we're, it's, almost like, it's almost like we're playing hide-and-seek with this. We don't want the other team to see it. So when the quarterback takes that snap, he's doing this. You see where the ball is? See how my back is? The defense can't see it, right? Yeah. Then that fullback gives the fake. He comes here. I'm going to give you the ball. Notice that my back is still to the defense. Doesn't see the ball. They can't see it. You get the ball. Come over here. So you get the ball here. Then I'm like this. Boom. Okay. You got the ball now, but you're turned here. I'm like this. Defense still can't see the ball. They can. He, he's got it, but I'm still acting like I got it. Okay. You faked. I faked. You got it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try the next play then, all right? So that is how we give the ball to our tailback on Buck Sweep, okay? Now, of course, guys, I'm being very, very basic with this right now, okay? If we were out on the field, all that stuff, we'd be able to get a little bit more in depth with it. That is Buck Sweep. So what goes with Buck Sweep? The next play is the trap. One trap, right. I think you guys call it the down, right? No, this trap, the, the, the down is oh, the, down. the down is off of the other way. Yeah. Yeah. So trap on trap, everything is exactly the same. Okay. Okay. So whenever we are linemen who hear the word trap. To the right, it meant left guard was pulling. Okay, so again, we tried to make it as simple as possible. The word sweep, both guards. We're trap, one guard. Okay, so it didn't matter whatever we wanted to do, different formations, differentness. My quarterback could come in there and go, you know, uh, lion four, trap, 
As soon as they heard trap, Lyman, that, they knew what their blocking scheme was. Lyman didn't have to listen to any of the other stuff. They listened to the key word. That was it. Okay? The key word. So all the other gibberish that was being spewed out was either for the backs or the receivers. Okay? Lyman had it simple. So even when I would do, I, I coached the line when I, uh, when I got older and the coaching it, uh, I would just simply in practice just say, okay, sweep right, trap, counter, you know, all that, I did down. I didn't have to mention the play, the formation, any of that stuff, okay? They knew what to do with whatever the, the main word was, okay? So anyways, trap right. What we're doing on trap is we're trapping the first guy to the right of the center, okay? And what we mean by that is we're setting a trap for him. We're making him think that he's an All-American and he is breaking through the line because our linemen are horrible. And he's going to come across thinking that he's an All-American. Okay, now you got to remember, if we've been running buck sweep, this guy's been getting hit right here. Boom, 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 boom. So he wants to get through. So we're going to let him. So what we do is we down block here, we down block here, and we let all these guys go because they're nothing to do with the play. He's going to come right down on this guy. He's going to come right down on this guy. And what we're doing is we're setting up like a swinging gate, okay, that's coming like this. A wall of guys that are coming down here, okay? And what we do then is this guy comes across, and he's like, oh, I'm going to take, I'm going to kill this guy right here, right? That buck sweep, this guy's been running this buck sweep over and over and over again, right? I'm going to kill him. And then guess who comes and ear holes him? Boom, right there. And this guy then gets knocked out, okay? He just got put down on his behind right here, all right? And what we do then is the fullback comes right through. Now, the fullback owns what's called the midline. The midline is the center's butt, right down the center's butt. That's what's called the midline, okay? Now, in the buck sweep, the quarterback owns the midline. But on trap, the fullback owns it. So the quarterback opens up a little bit more than what he did before. So before he would open up right here, he owned the midline. Now he's gonna open up even more. So now that fullback is gonna come straight. And again, the quarterback still got the same thing. He's got that ball in his belt, okay? And he's like this, the back to the defense. And then on his second step, he's here, giving the ball to the fullback, okay? So the fullback's now got the ball. Then what he does, after the fullback gets the ball, he comes here, and extends as if he's giving the ball to the tailback. The tailback's still gonna act like he's getting the ball. He's coming with his arm up. And what the tailback does is the tailback grabs wrist, okay? And when you grab wrist, it's a natural reaction. Watch what happens when I walk with my arm on my wrist. My arm swings, right? Well, when you run with a football, your arm swings. So when you grab your wrist, and you do this, it makes you swing as if you got the ball in your hand. Okay, again, another trick trying to fool the defense. Okay, we're trying to get them to think that this guy's got the ball when this guy's got the ball. Okay, so here now, the fullback gets the ball right here. We got a handoff right there. What he does is as soon as he hits where the center is, he cuts to the right and he gets up into that hole. Okay, and that's how we run the trap. Now the tailback then grabs his wrist and he fakes and he cuts and he turns just like he did when he was running buck sweep. Same exact thing, does the same exact thing. Okay, so again here, quarterback then, after he fakes like he gave the ball to the tailback, he rolls out as if he's got the ball, okay? Same exact thing, right? So everybody else is doing the same stuff. The only change in this was he's opening a little bit wider, fullback's getting the ball, he owns the midline, okay, for the backfield. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same, all right? So let's try trap here real quick. So give me those same four guys that were up here, okay? All right. Come here, okay, now, one, your first step, you're gonna open up, okay, first step, open up. Your first step is coming at him, okay? Okay, second step, give him the ball. No, you're gonna give him the ball this time. 
Okay, now go. Okay, your second step, bring this leg here. Stick out your arms like you have the ball. You're gonna come by like you're getting the ball and you're gonna clamp down, you're gonna grab your wrist. Okay, and then that's gonna carry you out and then you're gonna roll out as if you got the ball. Ball on the hip, acting like you got a ball on the hip and you're gonna roll out, okay? All right, you're blocking down just like you were. Next play is yours, dude, okay? All right, everybody see that? Yeah, yep. Okay, okay. Now, so if you look, we fed the tail back, we fed the full back. Now the wing back's a little hungry and he wants some. So the next play here we call one counter crisscross left, okay? So the way we run counter crisscross Okay, the way we run counter crisscross now is we're giving the ball to this guy. But the quarterback's not doing it. Okay, the tailback's going to do it. So we run everything like this in the backfield. And we give the ball to the tailback. So what happens here is guard is going to block out. Center is this way. Okay, and everybody's got down blocks. Okay, now... Anytime you hear the word counter, it tells you tackle pulls, okay? There's that key word, counter. Counter is for the tackle, okay? So the tackle then pulls, and this is the guy we're trapping. He's going to come up, and he's going to get hit there. Now, the tight end, if the tight end is on the opposite side, the tight end's over here, he down blocks, he's over here, he's going to pull and grab grass, okay? The fullback is doing, look what the fullback did here, right here. Fullback at the midline, when he got the ball, he doesn't get the ball, but he's still doing the same thing. He's coming here and he's coming right through to help block. Okay, so again, just like on the trap where we had this wall of guys, now we've got these two guys and the fullback coming here as that wall, okay? Quarterback opens up, okay, and he rolls back. Same footwork, same everything he did on this. And he's going to give the ball right here to the tailback. And we do that with a little half shade. That's the way they draw that up, right? He's going to roll as if he's got the ball. This guy here, wingback, takes a pause step, and then he comes underneath. Okay, now I know at uh, Pop Warner, sometimes you guys run it where he comes above. You also run a variation where the fullback goes here, okay? We called that we called that the wing counter, okay? Different blocking setup, but let's not get too confused on this. Anyways, what happens here is the tailback gets the ball, okay? The tailback gets the ball. Uh, come here, dude. Stand right there for a second. What's that? Not not yet, not yet. But the tailback gets the ball on this handoff, okay? And then what he does is come this way. He gives the ball back to the wing coming the other way, okay? And he carries out the fake as if he's got the ball, okay? So he would continue and then chop his steps and then come up like he's got the ball. Because again, guys, we want this guy to fly out. We want the safety to think he's got the ball. The quarterback rolls as if he, got, he has the ball. We want the outside linebacker to think the quarterback's got the ball. We want the corner to be confused. The more guys that are running the wrong direction, the less guys we have to block, okay? And so when these guys start to learn, the backfield start to learn that, everything starts to go smooth, okay? And you have a lot of success. So let me get that group of four here that was already here, okay? So now, wing back, you're over here. It's your turn to shine, okay? So now, this time here, same deal. You're going to open up, okay? So set hut, open up. Okay, you're coming here, keep that ball in tight. We wanna keep your back to me. Okay, you're gonna come here, you're coming across, you're gonna give the ball to him, and you're gonna come back underneath. So roll out and give the ball to him. Now you're gonna carry out like you got it. And that's how that play is basically ran. So again, the counter crisscross, all right? And if you look now, guys, look. 
full back or the tailback, full back, wing back. Okay. Now I had one year, guys, when I was coaching that each one of these players rushed for over a thousand yards. That's incredible. <laughs> okay. So when they want to sell out for each other, it's crazy what could happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if this guy right here, the tailback, is only worried about his stats and he wants the ball and he only wants the ball and he doesn't really care. So when, when it's not given to him, he kind of lackadaisically goes like this and turns around and watches and he does that stuff. He doesn't help the fullback. And then what happens is teams just key on, on him. So I played a number of games where we would come into the game and let's say this guy had 150 yards rushing. And let's say we're playing Delta. Delta scouted us. They want to stop this guy. So they're doing everything to watch him. Well, then guess what? This guy goes off. And he has a great game. And this guy knows he sold out the whole time and helped this guy shine. Okay, so now the next week we play, what's on tape? This guy did great, right? So we can go back to this guy if we have to, all right? So again, like I said, we've had, uh, I had, in fact, I had one year, guys, when we won our section championship, we lost our starting fullback to grades right before the league championship game. What was that again? You lost him to what? To grades. To grades. Yeah, he was, he was ineligible. Yeah. So he didn't, get, uh, he didn't get a chance to play for the league championship. Mm -hmm. So he was eliminated from all, he doesn't have a banner, he doesn't have a ring, he doesn't have any of that stuff. He was there for the first nine games, and then he's gone. Okay, you have a question? No. Okay, so, but what I did was I had two sophomores that got a lot of playing time throughout the year. And because we had such a good team, got such a good group of guys that sold out for each other, the two sophomores took over and we won a section championship. Okay, we didn't need him. He had, he going in the last game, he would have got over a thousand yards. He had 940 something yards rushing at that point. Okay. And the two sophomores came in and took over and the rest is history. So again, you guys, it, if everybody works together on this stuff, it works, but we have to be able to throw the ball too. Okay. You can't just run, right? So what comes off of this is the waggle. Now, what we called, we called it one, and we'd say waggle left, and then we would have a numbering system. So we would say like, uh, let's say uh, 231F flat. Now this is what the basic waggle was, okay? But I wanted numbers so I can switch up the routes of my receivers, okay? And so, what we did on the waggle was the same exact thing. Okay, now waggle, both guards pull. Okay, and what we do is we're waggling to the left. This play side guard is pulling and he's going to open up, and his second step, he's given ground. Because what he wants to do is he wants to get to the outside shoulder of this outside linebacker. And we want to do what's called a log block. Okay, and a log block means I'm gonna I'm gonna attack his outside shoulder. Come here for me, dude. Okay? So you stand over here, I'm gonna have you as my outside linebacker, okay? So when I'm pulling at him, I'm gonna come here, my second step is high, and what I wanna do is I wanna attack that outside shoulder. So what I'm gonna do is step across this for a second, I'm gonna punch that outside shoulder. And then I'm going to swing and pin him in, try to pin him in, because I want my quarterback to be able to roll out, okay? Now, if this guy is aggressive, and he comes across, and he comes running across, I'm going to just ride him right on up out of the play, okay? Thanks, dude. You can sit down. So, this guy's coming across. We want to pin him in. That's the first thing we want to do, okay? We're going to block here, always protecting play side whenever we pull both guards. Backside guard is pulling, and he's going to get out here, and if he sees nothing, he peels back 
to protect the backside of the quarterback. Okay? Tackle always steps up, whoops, steps in and fans. Okay? So he's going to step in, he's going to step in and fan back to, to help protect the backside, see who's coming. Okay? Now, our pass pattern two was going like we're doing a post, breaking it out. Three was the drag, so you got looking like a book. Two, three, one. Okay? So he had the drag coming across, that was the three pattern, and then the one was the post pattern. Okay? Now, F flat means fullback in the flats. Okay? So we got our quarterback, fullback, tailback. Fullback's going to sneak out into the flats. Okay? Doing the same thing. He's selling like he's getting the ball. He's clamping down, sneaks through, and gets out to the flats. Okay? Tailback. Coming across. Okay? He's going to, you guys all right? He's going to act like he's got the ball. And then he's going to block backside. Okay? Quarterback is rolling and he's going to roll high. Okay? And he's going to fake. Quarterback's going to roll high and he's going to fake. And what we do is off of this, we would teach the quarterback to look. Look at the tailback. Because the number one mistake a lot of you guys do, if you watch any of your films of any of your games, your quarterback, when he hands the ball off, he turns and watches, which is the last thing you should do. But it's a normal instinct when you're young is you hand the ball and you turn and you watch. Okay? Instead of carrying out a fake, you fake and you stop and you turn and watch. All right? So what we did was we wanted to have this look, and he would stop for just a second to pause and look at the tailback, and then he would take off rolling, still hiding the ball on his hip, okay? Using his body to shield, okay? And roll. And then once he got outside, depending on whether if he was able to get outside, if there is a run, he could run it if it's open. If it's not, he's going to do two different throws and we would work on them. He would do the first throw as he would be running towards the target. He would snap his shoulders and throw on the run. Okay. The other throw would be coming around and he would snap himself to set up the throw, and then he would make his throw, okay? So depending, we would work on this over and over in practice. We'd have cones set up so he's rolling high enough, okay? And depending on what he had to do, if he, it was an easy throw and he could throw it on the run and just run at the target and make that throw, that's what he'd do. If not, he had to snap to make this throw deep or back across the middle, that's what he would do, all right? But this is the waggle. The waggle is now where the quarterback the quarterback now is the star, okay? And so again, everything is feeding off. This is hitting, they're gonna try to stop that. This starts hitting. They're gonna stop, try to stop that and this. Boom, counter crisscross and now hitting. Then we go to the wagon, okay? And so once you start mixing it up, they don't have a clue who has the ball. They don't know where the ball's going, okay? And so all of them are based off of a teamwork and guys that are all willing to sell out for each other on the play, okay? All right, uh, that's about it, but you got any questions on any of that? Yep. Is there a, a word in the waggle for the guards? Yes. Tackles? Whenever you hear the word waggle, it means both guards are pulling, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. And so the play side, meaning we're waggling to the left, play side guard means the guard on the side of the play. Okay, since we're going to the left, play side guard right here. Okay, his job is to, we wanna, we wanna do a log block. Okay, we wanna reach that guy and pin him in. All right? Uh, just like over here when we ran buck sweep, when they had sweep, play side guard wanted to pull and kick. Kick the guy out, okay? And again, like I said, we do this in, in practice, guys. We ran, the way we organized practice and ran practice is if we were working on this series, which this was called the 20 series, okay? This was called the 20 series in the wing tee. So like when, when your dad was coaching, it was 121 buck sweep right, 124 trap right, 129 waggle left, 127 counter crisscross. And the reason is, is because the numbering, 
the numbering system. And so in the wing T, the numbering system is... Formation. So it's as if you're... So we would be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, depending on where the ball was going, that was the last number in there. The first number was a formation. Second number was the series. The series was what everybody was doing, the basic kind of feeding off each other. And then the last number was the hole, where the ball was supposed to go. And the reason why, like, the trap was called the four, even though the trap is ran here, it's because it's cut to the four hole. So right here, eventually, he gets to that four hole. That's where it's going. Okay, but anyways, that's that's what the you know the series, the formation and stuff like that. We what we did was we got rid of the 21. We taught them as series in practice, but we didn't uh, we didn't want the numbers in there because again we wanted this. And the the reason why this started to work is this. I'll give you an example. The first time we started doing the numbering, uh, we played uh, East Nicholas. And the opener, my fullback had over 100 yards receiving because what we did was we went and we took this two, and I think it was we called it, uh, I think it was, a, I think it was seven. I can't, I can't, can't remember. But anyways, what we did was we took this, had him run a comeback route like this. So the corner went back and came back and stayed with him, and the fullback snuck out. You see, and now nobody was there. Absolutely nobody, because when this guy crosses the face of the safety, the safety's going with him. Or he's going to stay back, right? Because he's got this coming at him. Either way, if this corner does not stay back, this is open. And we killed him on this. They, they had no clue where this guy was coming that was catching this pass. And it was all because we could change up the routes now. Okay, we could do all these different things to help mix it up. All right? So, uh, Coach, how come, and you mentioned at the beginning how this is a really good offense for our town and where, how we sit. Can you, can you explain the reason why it fits so well with the kids that we have? And so, it, how many guys do you have on your team? Like 11. Like 11, right? Okay. How many guys are huge, big kids, monster kids that are Two. able to, you know, Keep yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> so, Three. here's the thing, guys. All these blocks by these linemen, if you notice, are at an angle. They're not blocking the guy that's on them. They have the advantage. The advantage is this. This guy does not know who's going to block him. Okay? So you have the advantage when you don't, when, when the defensive guy doesn't know where the guy's coming from. So think about this. If you were this defensive lineman, buck sweep, you're getting hit here. Okay? Trap, you think you're getting across and this guy's hitting you. Counter crisscross, the center's blocking you. Okay? Waggle, you're kind of left. But when you come across, you see this. This fake handoff here. So you're going to bite on that. I don't know how many times my tailback would come back after a big play on a waggle for a touchdown or something and tell me, God, I'm getting hit like crazy. That's great. That's great. You're selling, and these guys think you have the ball. So guess what? If this guy's tackling you, he's not chasing our quarterbacks, right? Quarterback's not getting touched. That's the goal, right? So, again, the, the whole mindset with running the wing team was it was an advantage for us because we didn't have all these players. We didn't have all these big-time uh, linemen, all this stuff. We could use angles and speed, okay? So we would teach the players... We'd always coach them up. If I have a down block to the right, I'm stepping with my right. So, boom, right there. So, now if you think about it, I know the snap count. So, one step when the ball's being snapped, I've already beat the defensive lineman off the ball. One step. And now I'm at an angle on him. So, I have the advantage. He's got, he doesn't know that I'm coming. One step, I'm into him, and then boom. I can then take him and drive him out whichever direction I wanted to go. But again, uh, the wing T did that for us, and like I said at the beginning, I was I used to have I'd have guys that had, you know, in their mind they were going to be a fullback or they were going to be something like that, and I would say, well, you could be the third string fullback, stand next to me and listen to me call plays all all game, or you could be my starting guard and be out there and play. 
And once those guys got in and started playing guard in this offense, they loved it. Because, again, there is nothing better than this guy right here pulling and this guy right here not knowing you're coming. And you get him right there. Okay? There is nothing better than that. All right? This guy then is done, and you sit there and you make that block and you watch this fullback go all the way for a touchdown because of your effort and your block. You know, so, you know, uh, we used to always do this too, just a little shout out to our linemen. So when, when I was coaching the line, linemen never carried anything because they carried the team. So they didn't carry bags. They didn't carry any of that for us. They practiced in the shade. So if you know where the football field is, the practice field on the top there over by the edge where all the trees are, oh, yeah. that's where my linemen were. And they would all go out there. They would all, the, the running backs would carry the bags out, put them over there. They'd go lay on the bags and go relax before practice. And they would do all that. Meanwhile, the running backs, the quarterbacks were all out in the sun, all out in the heat. And they would always say, well, why, you know, the running backs would whine. Quarterbacks, of course, whine. But, and I'd tell them, I'd say, hey, every Friday night, what do you hear being announced? You know, oh, so-and-so, you know, made a great pass, great run by this guy. This, 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 all talking about all the quarterbacks and the running backs and all that. Not one lineman getting mentioned. So I made the quarterbacks and the running backs take care of the linemen because guess what? They're the ones that are getting your name announced. It's their effort that's getting your name being, you know, and you read the paper, you know, got all these guys, so-and-so passed for this, so-and-so ran for this, all this stuff. And then they'll say like, yeah, and the line blocked good. Really? The line blocked great if these guys are doing all this stuff. The line did it all. So I would be, the line was pampered on my team, okay? You take care of the ones that make it work, all right? But again, so we made being a lineman the best thing. You wanted to be a lineman. You wanted to. Because you were, you knew at practice. Now, of course, they practiced just as hard as everybody else, but they were taken care of. So.